Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we are going to be awarding our third winner in year two of the Challenge Coin Cocktail Contest. The My fourth. name is Vic New. The fourth. I read the third because it was there, but the fourth winner. <laughs> fourth month we're in right now. My name is McNew. Please join me in welcoming my co-host Steve Akeley along with our special guest Tim Swyatt, Hunter Coffee, and Ryan Thompson. Hey gang, what's up? Hey everybody. Hello. So yes, we are going to have some fun today. These are always fun to do. I like the uh, the process of seeing the cocktails made. Uh, and uh, yeah, we've got uh, three great finalists as well. So same same lineup as last month actually. So we'll see We'll see who uh, Adina took it last month. So see if she can. Uh, no, she, no, I did. Oh, Dave no. did. Yeah, Dave I did. did. Dave did. Okay. Okay. With the flaming squirt, squirt bow. That's the one I voted yeah. for. I thought that was the best one of the yeah. year. But uh, yeah. Okay. I, I didn't remember that. So at my age, that happens. So uh, it, before we, we were talking, what should we talk about? And it sounded like we're hitting on some disasters and, and things like that. So, so Ryan, you were talking about something about a mudslide. What, what's going on here? Mudslide? Yeah, I just got back to my desk in front of my computer just in time. I spent an hour and a half parked on I-70 here in the Vale Valley uh, this evening, uh, trying to make it uh, back in time for this podcast. So uh, there was, a, there was a, a nice rain shower that came through this afternoon, and, and after the rain showers, all the mud uh, starts coming down the mountain, and so it came across I-70 and backed things up quite a bit. So, uh, But that gave me enough time to sit there and study my notes for the show and uh, get okay. excited about these cocktails we're checking out tonight. Okay. So living in Colorado, you have to deal with mudslides, blizzards. Anything else seem to seem to be problems? Well, wildfires too out in Colorado. Wildfires. Mudslides are unfortunately a, a result of uh, all the wildfires we've been having out here as well. So, yeah. uh, so those kind of go hand in hand, unfortunately, but still it's a beautiful pl- place to live. Uh, I've been here for 22 plus years or so. Uh, it's, it's, it's hometown and I, I still love it here. So it's, uh, we'll, we'll take a couple of the, the mudslides and wildfires for everything else that this place gives back to us. So gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, T- Tim, how about you? Well, we've been uh, getting all the haze from the wildfires out west here in Chicago. Okay. So I don't know if uh, St. Louis is getting any of it all, but we got a lot of the haze up here. Uh, and that's really love some rain for a change. You know, here you pretty much are dealing with, you don't like how it's going. It's almost like Boston weather, wait an hour. Uh, and uh, you'll have a nice breeze. You'll get your 90 degree weather. Then it was 60 in the evenings. It's, it's been out over the summer this year. Um, but it, what it really gets us is a late frost. I'm a big gardening guy. So my wife and I do a lot of gardening and stuff like that. So we got to plan for all these frosts when think of plant stuff and everything. And that's a first world problem, I guess. But, um, the real problem that we have, the disaster are the chipmunks. The chipmunk <laughs> population here. Chipmunks are bad. Brutal. Yes. Brutal. They will, they will tunnel underneath your driveway and then your driveway drops, uh, you know, parts of it and stuff. It's, I, I agree. I, I, in the Midwest where we live, you know, where you're greater Chicago area, I'm in St. Louis. Really, we don't face a lot of those things. There's no forest fires. There's no, there's no, uh, uh, really nothing. We don't have hurricanes. We, uh, t- they'll say tornadoes and they'll be like, that's a really bad thing we've got. I'm 53 years old. We've had one tornado that's done any damage since i've been alive it has been nothing no one no one got hurt no one no one no one was injured no no one died uh but a couple houses got uh got some roofing damage uh so uh and there was a couple other things it, it was but but that and that was about 10 12 years ago so and that's been it though i i don't i don't, I don't really have to deal with any of that stuff so no, but give me a good long cold spell in the winter because it calls the chipmunk and the skunk population and i'll be happy yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, i'm having to manage the population myself hunter you are dealing with uh two raging fires going on right now correct uh one's about to burn down now well, the... <laughs> you lit those yourself though so you're just what, cleaning yeah. some brush or something what, what's going on there uh it was an old house that we had uh we had a control burn uh the fire department came out and burned it down <laughs> and then they had to clear out a bunch of brush around it, and then they just left a big ass pile of brush uh, yeah. for us to deal with. And I'm okay. finally getting to it. And then we had a fire pit out here; it's getting kind of pretty full, so we had to burn it too. Yeah, yeah. I, I I do like to burn everything, so you know, I I literally, you know, because I live around a lot of old oaks and stuff like that. They're always dropping branches and stuff like that. Cut all that stuff up. Uh, I did, and of course you're not supposed to burn leaves, but if you got, a, I got a big fire pit, and you just put all that stuff in there and just burn all that. So I, I, I literally burn everything. You, you could take a, a, a pile that's, uh, you know, uh, eight feet tall and, and and ten feet wide, and and you burn that down to, uh, you know, just fill in the bottom of the ash uh, ash pit of the thing, and then just dump that. It's amazing. So yep. yeah, big into the burning. 
I like almost look like you're signaling for help with the bonfires we have around here. It's great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. McNew, I, you live a life of leisure. Do you have any, any issues or anything like that? <laughs> No, I, I will say though, Home Depot is a disaster. And between them and the rain, it took a damn month to put up my fence, but it's finally up. Living disaster free right now. Life's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Now and now you're making a push to get a pool for your dogs oh, or something. They like got that? one. They got one yesterday. It was oh, of course. You know, it was in the picture. We that we took the convertible out. So I we had to go to Walmart and they had these little kitty pools. We walked by and I'm like, oh, the babies need it. So we drove home with it hanging out of the back of the car yesterday. <laughs> so it's just like one of those plastic ones like you had when yeah. you were like two years old? Yep, exactly. It's it's biggish though. It's like four feet wide. They they haven't played in it. And you have a kitty pool as well, or do you not have um, it this year? No, mine got a hole in it, so I got rid of it. <laughs> okay. So the dogs have a pool now and you don't? Exactly. Okay. And there they are right now. <laughs> How long do you uh, have a pool in your backyard? Uh, next summer, because we have to redo <laughs> the deck and wrap it around the house to make it work with the pool, but next summer. Right. Yep. And uh, one last question for McNew. you got a new job. Can we talk about that or not? Uh, yeah, I don't want to say the company's name, but you can say it's in waste management. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. she's all mobbed up now. So yeah, apparently I'm, So I didn't really know that was a thing, Steve, until you made a comment uh, when I was texting you. And I was like, the mob and waste management. Oh, and I, yeah. went down, I went down a rabbit hole that day. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 If any if at any podcast beat us now, we'll just have McNew take care of it. So it'll be. Yeah, apparently <laughs> I have ties now. <laughs> yeah. McNew just needs to drop a hint at, you know, at, at lunch or something like hey, that. Be like, having problems, took care of this for me. <laughs> What's your capo knowing you'll be all right? Yeah. <laughs> then they'll get to the don. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, yeah, guess what? It is time to drink. What is everyone drinking? Let's start with Hunter. Hunter Coffee, what do you got there, man? Uh, oh, I'm sitting up at the gift shop right now watching these fires. Just grab so something kinda, off the I, shelf I, then, I, I, man. I, I, Hell yeah. I kind of got my business. Taking a litter right now. Okay. Oh. All right. He's I got the weather label here. Okay. Just grab something off the tasting bar. This is the dream right here. Just hanging out at the gift shop, opening up the cork pop. I didn't hear anything. No, nothing. Nothing going on there, Hunter. Sorry. Oh. Ryan, I think you can better that. What do you got, man? <laughs> well, usually I take this time to do a shameless plug for 10th Mountain Whiskey, but uh, I'm going to uh, uh, take a left turn on this one. Uh, excited to be drinking what I've got here in front of me. Our assistant distiller uh, ran through Costco two, three weeks ago and uh, came across the old Willits pot still reserve <laughs> all right so, <laughs> that's um, is that the big one is that the 175 yeah it sure is <laughs> <laughs> those sound but funny uh, when you pour too wait till you hear that thing pour but yeah let's, it, was, let's... it was 80 bucks at costco and he called me up he's like you want a bottle i'm like well hell yeah i'll take a bottle of that yeah so. okay well not much on the cork pot it is a little difficult to pour you gotta love that noise though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, exactly. hilarious. it's hilarious it's hilarious all right. I, uh, about uh, seven, eight years ago, I was doing a couple of tours out there in Kentucky and came across Willits and was uh, five, 10 minutes late. They were starting to close up shop, but uh, Drew, the, the distiller, at, is Drew still the distiller there? Drew, yeah. Drew calls me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he saw we were just poking around and he invited my buddy and I in and uh, gave us a tour. It took 30, 40 minutes out of his time, even though they were closing up shop and showed That's us all cool. around and I was really impressed with what they had going on, and I've been a fan, a fan of them ever since. So I was excited to be able to get my hands. That's on that's cool. You got to hang out. I got to hang out with Drew one time too. That's it. Uh, he's pretty elusive. So the fact you got yeah. to, he's like a Sasquatch in the in the business. So you got to. <laughs> him. So cool. Good for you. Yeah. All right, Tim. What do you got, man? All right. So I'm I'm testing the Lenny theory with a brand new microphone. Finally, my first cork pop with a new microphone. I'm drinking uh, uh, Jade's uh, Whiskey Row. Uh, okay. It's the uh, batch number four. Batch four whiskey Brand row. Okay. No, no, heard nothing. Nothing, man. Yeah, Ryan right. still got the lead. I'm, I'm going to go next. We'll let McNew go last year. I've got the watershed here. They came on a show recently, gave us this. This one's finished in their apple brandy barrels. So, and it's pretty full. We had uh, just one, one pour out of here. Here we go. Uh, there you go. 
Uh, McDoo, he had that queued up on the soundboard. That sounded like the sound of victory to me, but we'll see. McDoo, <laughs> you could you get a chance here. What do you right. You're going to take it because I'm still on our rum kick and made a really unoriginal blue Hawaiian for a cocktail night. <laughs> I saw that, McNew. I was going to call you out on that. I was wondering what was going on there. Yeah, oh. I just they they had to use blue carousel, so I just got in the spirit and made me a cocktail too. All right, all right. Well, cheers, gang. Cheers, guys. All right, what we do next is we spend about 15 minutes congratulating me on the cork pop win. Uh, <laughs> talk about what it means to them and uh, all that kind of stuff. Now, now, what we'll do next, we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, it's cocktail time. We'll do that in just a few. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today, we have our cocktail contest for July, our July winner. Yes, we are. We'll see what happens here. It should be fun. We got three great contestants. These people are really good at making cocktails at this point. Okay. So, uh, we do like to introduce all uh, three of them first before we kind of get into the making of the cocktail. So, Adina, you're going to be up first. Uh, just uh, how are you doing today? Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute. Can't hear you. Okay. Now. Go. There you no. go. You're good. You're good. I'm doing very well. Looking Ex forward to this. Excellent. So, and the, the cocktail that you're going to be creating for us is called. It's called the immigrant. The immigrant, okay. And where are you drawing inspiration from this one for? Um, from my grandparents, all immigrating from Sweden to the United States in the early 1900s. And okay. uh, I'll get a little bit into that when I talk about the cocktail. Cool. You've never mentioned before that uh, your your ancestors are from Sweden, so. No, I'm <laughs> no, kidding. No. You, you, you say it every time we talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Well, Adina, we'll talk to you in just a second here, okay? okay. Our second contestant will be appearing on video. So unfortunately, he cannot be here. He, uh, he has a job that does not allow him to plan very far in advance. And we put him on the schedule and then uh, he lets us know if he can make it. And unfortunately, this time he could not. So he is not going to be here. So that is Kevin Majors, but we do have it on video. So we'll get to see him making his cocktail and we treat it like any other one. So we'll treat it. Uh, you know, he, he gets the opportunity just like uh, our other two that are here live uh, with a chance to, to win this thing. So we'll we'll, uh, we'll see that video. He'll be up second in the contest. And last but not least is Dave Ewalds. Dave, how you doing? Hi, doing great. Absolutely. So what do you got going on tonight? I've got a cocktail I've called uh, Tangled Up in Red, White, and Blue. Since okay. the year was Red, White, and Blue. Uh, it's kind of a take on a Bob Dylan song, uh, Tangled Up in Blue. So. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, did you like th the theme this month? Was this something that you thought, oh, I can work with this? Or were you were you bummed when you saw what it was going to be? No, yeah, no, it's kind of interesting. Uh, uh, I don't know about that uh, iridescent blue stuff, but... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of an un unnatural liqueur to use, but it's, it's all right. Yeah. yeah. You almost uh, you think of Elvis when uh, you got that for some reason. I don't know the blue Hawaii and uh, yeah, you, think, blue Hawaii. Think of, yeah. you think of E. So, <laughs> yeah. But, and we recently had some fun. Uh, the Ewalds, uh, McNew was there. Uh, that's uh, Bob Whitlatch is in the audience. He was there. We were on a Tiki cruise. So that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? It yeah. was fantastic. And uh, Turner made the best shirts in existence. If yes. you're fit. <laughs> Yes. it was a great design on them. Yeah, we got to so it was sponsored by rolling fork uh spirits and uh they had their rolling fork rum there and they had batch cocktails they also had uh you know various age uh, st uh stated uh rum from different parts of the world very cool it was just a great event wasn't it mm -hmm. wonderful yeah. yeah yeah i can't wait for that one next year so that's that's going to be officially be the first annual as we uh roll that one out every year because it was really really fun so yeah I, I enjoyed everything about that one all right well it is time to move on to our cocktail so adina that means you are up you're going to be the first one making it you you're making something else for us called the immigrant what uh what's the ingredients here and what's the inspiration for this one okay well on this one i've never really worked with the blue curacao before Okay. So I, I kind of, and then with the theme, the red, white, and blue, I'm thinking, okay, all the cocktails I've done so far have been uh, an homage to the Nordic or Scandinavian tradition. So I'm thinking, how am I going to pull that into a red, white, and blue cocktail? Right. Um, so I started thinking about it and, my, and thinking about the stories my grandmother would tell me about coming over on the boat and... Um, you know, seeing the Statue of Liberty for the first time and going through all the the lines at Ellis Island and stuff. And I thought, man, they really went through a lot to get here. And uh, 
so I thought, well, I'll make a cocktail kind of honoring their journey and the blending of the red, white, and blue with the uh, Scandinavian flavors. So um, this is what I'm uh, coming up with. Okay. Where, where did they end up settling, Adina? Or did they already have family that they were headed to see? Or did, where, where did they settle? They after all they... different. Uh, okay. My uh, grandma and grandpa on my uh, dad's side actually used to work together in Sweden on a dairy mm -hmm. farm. He moved here with his brother, and that's a whole story. Um, grandma came over because she was in love. Gotcha. And, uh, on my mom's side... Um, I don't know quite as much about them, but uh, a lot of it was poverty and famine and things like that that uh, drove them out and got them to, they all ended up uh, settling mostly in the Northern Illinois area, um, okay. but some of them worked up in Upper Michigan and one ended up in California, so they're all over the place, but. Yeah, yes, the, the only, um... Uh, great grandparents that I knew were uh, from Russia and they, uh, they came over in, in 1917 as uh, the Russian empire was falling. They got out and no money, literally no money in their pockets came over here. Uh, uh, grandfather worked uh, menial jobs, janitor and things like that. Finally got to the point where he built up where he, they had some money and were doing okay. And then the stock market crashed and literally had to start over a second time. Uh, you know, amazing story and uh, just great people. Uh, yeah. Russian immigrants, they, they, they came through same thing experience you're talking about and then moved to St. Louis where they already had some family members there. Just a amazing story. And I'm so glad I got to meet those folks as a young child. Yep. Uh, my, uh, my, uh, met, uh, my grandfather passed away when I was, the great grandfather passed away when I was three and my great grandmother when I was five. So, but I did get to meet him and I do have memories. So it's cool. That's Very cool. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to make uh, my uh, immigrant cocktail using okay. blue curacao and with the theme of the red, white, and blue. All right. So, Would you like Tim to sing Led Zeppelin's The Immigrant Song as you do that? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so the first thing I did was I took some uh, lingonberries. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, some Swedish lingonberries. Uh, it's like a jam. And what I'm going to do is just mix that in it with some of the Swedish Cronin liqueur that I talked about last month. Okay. Um, it's a rum-based punch that uh, actually came to Sweden via Jakarta. And uh, it was christened by the King of Sweden in 15, or 1753 as being a, um, a Swedish spirit. Okay. So I'm just gonna thin that out. I'm gonna take my glass and Drain this into the glass. So this nice probably is not going to be as pretty as the one in the picture. And I got to kind of get that in there. But lingonberries are um, kind of related to a cranberry. And they're very common in um, Swedish foods and drinks. Um, and pancakes. And pa oh. <laughs> <laughs> And I happen to like a little lingonberries with my meatballs, so. Oh, okay. So there's my red layer. Then I'm Maybe the key is secret ingredients. It yeah. might be. Maybe that's how they do it. They put the that's lingonberries how they do it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Adina might just have let this cat out of the bag there. <laughs> put some. What's that going in there now? Fresh ice. 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 Okay. The I got the small screen on, so it's harder to see. And I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter reminded me of that the other day. I didn't know I was old till Hunter told me. So. so. Okay. Uh, Are you, now now, now I know I'm old. What ice is. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Then what I did was I thought the uh, blue curacao was just a little too blue. So what I did was I um, marinated some uh, blueberries into the uh, blue curacao to kind of get rid of the electric blue color. Okay. 
Yeah. Dina, while, while you're doing that, uh, we're, I was hanging out with Hunter and uh, um, Royce Neely the other day, and Hunter's telling the story, and he's like, man, this dude was old. No offense, Steve. I, I, how, do, how do I get drunk into this? I, 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 I'm just, uh, you're talking about being a victim. Yeah. <laughs> Great beard, Steve. <laughs> so an unprovoked shot across the yeah, bow. Yeah, I'm just sitting there having a good time. I'm like, I'm I'm here with my you know two best friends, and uh yeah, I'm having a great time. And then that happened. I, it may, it makes you reevaluate everything in your whole life. I'll tell you, hey, Steve. That's what friends are for, though, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. If you, can't, <laughs> if you can't beat your own friends down, who can? You know. So yeah, exactly. Your friends. I was at, at the gym a couple weeks ago, and this one girl that I was working out with. She said, well, how old are you? And I told her, and she says, oh, man, you really are old. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was a lot worse. <laughs> Not needed. No, that wasn't needed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do with my blue layer. Okay. Uh, it's the mix of the blue cursor. Uh, the other way. Other way. other way. Other way? Okay. That's the director there. We just heard. Um, I'm going to take a spoon and put it uh, backside down, and then I'm going to pour this gent very gently over the spoon okay so it Makes doesn't sense. mix as yep. much keeps your layers together and see i've got a little fill here at least your workstation that's good two ounces Extra credit for that. of coconut milk coconut Making milk my white layer. Okay. two ounces of coconut milk I'm going to mix a half ounce of elderflower liqueur with that. Okay. Again, elderflower liqueur is a typical Swedish um, flavor. A lot of people there will um, go out uh, and gather their elderflowers and make their own um, elderflower syrups or liqueurs in the summers. It's a pretty common thing to do. Then um, an ounce and a half of white rum. Okay. I got with Adina the other day. She made me drink some hemlock. I was okay, though. I just, I, 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 yeah. Well, she yeah, she did. out on the older population first? Yes. I get, yeah. She's like, here, try this. It's hemlock. I'm like, oh, <laughs> that, this is like out of children's fairy tale books. I, uh, but then she's like, oh, this, this kind's not poisonous. So I lived. So I guess it's okay. Yeah. It, was, it was actually quite good. It was, and then I've got some uh, just regular lemonade. Okay. Mix that all together, and then I'll see how this works. I'm going to have to pour it into a pitcher. Oh. Dog barking, right on cue. That's cute. so sad. He says hi. <laughs> Again, so doing sad. the back of the spoon technique. Okay. And just pouring that over the top. There it goes. Look at that. Look at that. Wow, that looks pretty darn good. And it is my red, white, and blue immigrant cocktail. Wow, all right. All right, so what we're going to do next, you know, normally we don't have this, but normally we don't have people with any background in this stuff. But I didn't even tell you guys this, but Ryan Thompson has, uh, you, you worked for years in this industry, right, Ryan? You, you, you know this stuff. So, so tell us a little bit. Break this down. How do you think Adina did here? Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, yeah, I did uh, spend four years behind a bar. Most of those years were behind a, a fine dining bar in Vail Village. And then uh, I've owned a restaurant as well for the last 20 years. So this is right in the wheelhouse right here. Um, checking out cocktails, seeing how they're built, seeing how they're made. Uh, my first question for Adina is, where does your, where does your experience come from? This is a, a really sophisticated cocktail. Uh, so I, I want to come over to your house and then <laughs> this looks pretty great. So I'm just curious, hey. Adina, where's your background from? Uh, well, actually I have no background. Um, I, I actually just started getting into the cocktail things, um, last year during as a COVID hobby. Right. And, uh, I've just been reading a lot, watching a lot of videos and stuff. And I, I tried a couple different layered cocktails actually for this. One of them was really pretty to look at, but it did not, I did not care for the taste at all. It was just way too sweet. And, and uh, so I thought, well, we'll try something a little different. And 
came up with this one. Yeah. Well, making a making a layered cocktail can be difficult, uh, yeah. especially keeping the layers separated. Like, and you did a great job there. They're they're certainly separated. You have the red, white, and blue going on, so you stuck with the theme. Uh, blue curacao is tough to work with. From a judging standpoint, I was excited that uh, that was the base spirit tonight because it is such a difficult spirit to work with. So, uh, I like I like the fact that you kind of uh, dumbed down the the chemical blue that was going on with it. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the glowing blue. Thank you. That's a great uh, red, white, blue right there. Kept so, the kept uh, yeah kept the the layers perfect. So yeah, yeah. great job. The name the immigrant as a shout out to uh, to your folks, your ancestry. Uh, and here being on a more of a patriotic July theme with red, white, and blue, I thought that was great to incorporate that. I wasn't familiar with lingonberry or the Swedish uh, Cronin punch. So I was sitting there uh, looking those up while I was uh, parked on I-70 this evening. So that gave me some time to get familiar with those two flavors. So <laughs> thanks for introducing those to me. Uh, uh, again, I, uh, I can't wait to try it. Um, I'm, I'll be making it at home here soon enough. So uh, I think out of the gate, uh, it's a great cocktail, and I'm excited to see where the next two go. So, yeah. Nice work, Dana. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Congrats, Adina. You have set a very high bar. We do have two more competitors. They're gonna they're gonna get their chance here, but I'm telling you, Adina has brought yes. it out. So that's going to be tough to beat. So there you go. There you go. All right, Adina, your time is done. You can you can relax now. I know you, you'll help Dave doing the directorial stuff he was just helping you with. So uh, sit back, enjoy your cocktail, and uh, and we're going to move on to our video presentation of Kevin Majors. And of course, we have our video person is Tim Sponge. <laughs> All right, let's give this one a shot. Okay. okay, ABV Network. It uh, is. It's not showing. Sure. Something's wrong there. ABV Network. You not coming through. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah, we had like, it looked like a black. The whole dog. middle was blocked. Yeah. yeah. Some, I don't know what that we is. Can hear him. It was working before. Right, let, me, let me work on this here. I had it all set up right. And it was like, working. Yeah. yeah. Let me see if I can change my view around here and not do full I, screen. I, I was panicking today though. I was like, man, we don't have 10. Yeah, I don't know what we're this. doing. Yeah. I, I sent Steve instructions because I'm like, I can't do it. Maybe you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's try so this. glad Tim's here. Okay. All right. Here we go. You're coming through now? Yeah. It looks yeah. like it's going to work. Good video. All right. Yeah. There we go. Okay, oh, ABV Network. It is, you guys are what is it? ABV Network, YouTube, the world, whatever. I'm Kevin Majors. Most of y'all know me. Y'all see me. I'm ugly enough, so y'all really don't need to see me, but I'll give you a little preview. I'm going to make some blue rocket pop for you guys right now. Uh, what I used was blue Caraco. That was the ingredient of the month. We used two ounces of that. Ounce and a half of wild turkey. Um, one ounce of unsweetened tea. Um, I used Gold Peak because it was on sale at the store. Um, kind of <laughs> learned that um, from, um, 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 what's his name, Veach. He, I asked him, you know, because he does his little articles and says, uh, you know, sometimes you use pecans, walnuts. I'm like, why do you choose different things? He said, whatever my wife got in the cabinet. So <laughs> I decided that because it was on sale. Jim Beam Orange um, and the premium strawberry cocktail mix. So. Shakers full of ice. Uh, we can start off with whatever you choose, but I'm gonna go in the order of what we actually um, uh, 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 listed on there. So we're gonna go with, and this is my little two ounce pour container. We go with two ounces of the blue curacao. Most people call it caraco. We got two ounces of that. Give a little shake. Throw that in the back. Ounce and a half of the wild turkey rye, wild turkey rye. I like that stuff. Mm -hmm. right. One ounce of our tea. And as you see, um, a lot of these ingredients are gone because trial and error. Uh, we used actually a lot, and that was an error there with um, what do you call this stuff? Too much. That's an ounce and a half of tea. Cuz um, <laughs> you don't want to use that. You want to use an ounce. Um, I use more rye in the one recipe or a couple of them, and it didn't come out as sweet and as great tasting. So we're gonna go with a half an ounce of the Jim Beam orange. I was wondering who's buying that stuff. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> and a half ounce. Let me check this up. Because this stuff is kind of a little concentrated and a little different. It's kind of thick, as you'll see when we pour it. But it's a quick pour because it's only a half ounce. Mm -hmm. Throw that in there. Now, I don't know because I'm not a professional bartender and never asked in there. Do you do bitters in there or... You know, what's the big difference? The bitter in the drink before you shake it or the bitters after you pour and put the drink in? I don't know. I choose to throw mine in the shaker cup. So we got one, two, and three. That's where I would put them too, by the way. But I, don't know. Yeah. Mug, I don't know anything either. But... Shake, I would also put them in. I'm going to take a little pause break, but you'll hear me shaking in the background. For the magic of television, I'm going to bring that glass over that was chilled in the refrigerator already. And we'll throw this in here, the chilled glass. We pour that beautiful blue Interesting. color. Interesting. And we're going to, oh, <laughs> we're going to garnish with a little lemon there. Looks pretty darn then good. I'll bring it over and show you closer. That looks like a good summertime so drink, that actually. That is about perfect. That's refreshing. And it tastes like a childhood blue rocket pop popsicle. There That's me. I've done I'm it all. That's what it is. Y'all have fun. Enjoy yourself. I'm at work right now. All right. So uh, we're going to turn it over to Ryan again to break that one down. He did a good job. Uh, the blue rocket pop was our second entry from Kevin Majors. What, what do you think of that one, Ryan? Oh, you're on mute or, or something. And I want to hang out with Kevin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's a lot of fun. He is. What a great personality, man. He's having a blast there. I bet you he'd be great to have a couple of cocktails with. Uh, I love the fact that he used two different types of whiskey. He had the, the uh, Wild Turkey Rye and then the Jim Beam Orange. Yeah. Uh, so this being the Bourbon Podcast, I'll give him kudos for that, for, for using uh, the Jim Beam Orange Bourbon. We'll, we'll give him a little uh, leeway on that one. But uh, nonetheless, Jim Beam. And also the wild turkey rye. I thought that was really creative to put, put both of those in there. I think the, uh, the blue curacao with the orange uh, flavor that that provides along on top of the Jim Beam orange might be a little too much uh, with two ounces of blue curacao with a half ounce of Jim Beam orange. Uh, then top it off with an even more sweet uh, strawberry cocktail mix. So that might be uh, a little too sweet for my taste. Uh, throwing some bitters in the mix uh, was a nice touch to help balance those, I think. Uh, putting the bitters into the cocktail will result in uh, more of the bitters flavors on the palate. If you just put bitters on at the end on top of the cocktail as a float, then it's going to be more of an aromatic. Uh, okay. So what's going on there? Well, just for your professional opinion, what would you have done? Because since he asked the question during the video, what would you have done there, Ryan? I would have used a little less uh, blue curacao. Okay. Uh, I think right. two ounces in that cocktail might be a bit much. Uh, two ounces of whiskey, which is great. Uh, depending on your, uh, your, your, your palate, uh, maybe an ounce of unsweetened tea or maybe two ounces of unsweetened tea might've been the way to go, but I would have played around with that. But again, I like the fact that he uh, finished it off with a couple of dashes of bitters there to help balance out some of that uh, sweetness going on. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and again, we're not tasting these, but from an aesthetic standpoint, that, that looked like is rest ready for, uh, to be on the menu. Right. I mean, the, the, the look of it looked, looked great. I mean, yeah, yeah. One thing I always say, uh, not only at the restaurant, but at our taste rooms as well as you, you, you drink with your eyes first, you eat with your eyes first. If you like what you're seeing, then it's already, uh, in tuned into your mind that it's probably going to be a good cocktail. Uh, if the cocktail or if the meal looks bad, then it's like, all right, I don't know about this, but I'll give it a shot. Maybe you're pleasantly surprised. But if it looks great to begin with, then you're off to the right start. And uh, and there's a good chance that you're going to enjoy the cocktail. So, yeah, the presentation uh, is great. I loved uh, his description that uh, you strain it into a chilled fly ass glass. <laughs> <laughs> Which that's official now. terminology yes yeah. i understand now coming from uh kevin and his personality that just makes perfect sense so uh yes. the one thing i think he missed was uh the red white and blue theme obviously he got the blue part but missed out on the red and white so uh, maybe some points deducted for that aspect but overall great presentation probably a really uh, delicious cocktail to drink so Okay. Thanks for helping us break that one down. And uh, next up is going to be Dave Ewalds, who's going to have his tangled up in red, white, and blue. All right, Dave, you are up, my friend. Okay. I think I'm unmuted. Yep. yep. Uh, 
So this one, it's, you know, so those of you that really like margaritas are going to say, well, this is kind of margarita sounding. Well, it is kind of a de deconstructed margarita. Okay. Really, if you look at the ingredients. So what I first did, and I had to have this in the fridge overnight, is uh, this is an EC uh, cocktail whipper. Best, best purchase of the COVID year, I'll tell you what. This, this thing's great for cocktails. So what in one of these dudes, what I put is two egg whites. Sorry, McNew. Uh, four ounces of orange juice, two ounces of Contro orange liqueur. Okay. Uh, and then what I did was I charged it with a uh, nitrous cartridge. So the nitrous cartridge goes in this little thing here. So I charged it up, you know, shake, shaked it real well, um, charged it, put it in the fridge overnight. Okay. So just to make sure it's nice and frothy, we're going to put another nitrous cartridge in the thing. You can hear it charge, actually, hopefully, if the mic picks it up. So this is pre-prep. There you go, yeah. And uh, so this will make quite a few toppings. So you could do, you know, three, four cocktails with this one, depending on how much you And that handy little tool was added with the uh, you guys getting into the cocktails, right, Dave? It's not something yeah. you had a couple of years ago. It's something yeah. relatively new. Yep. This thing is handy for lots of stuff. So shake it again with the nitrous, make sure it's well combined. So we're going to put that off to the side. Okay. Okay. So that's pre-prep. So we're going to, I'm going to squeeze a lime here. We're going to need some lime juice, but I need a little bit of a lime to rub on my glass. So I'm going to squeeze this lime in this handy, handy cocktail squeezer. Okay. That was another cocktail purchase for COVID. <laughs> you're, you're, you guys are getting to be professionals at this point. So I got to split screen the video here. So I got about a half ounce of lime juice from that. Okay. So we're going to use that a little bit. But most importantly, so you got your nice margarita looking glass. So I'm going to wet the rim nicely. Just rim in the glass with the lime. So, yep. Yeah. Now, just for our podcast audience there, letting them know what's going on. Yep. Then I have a plate here that has some orange sugar. Okay. And some tahine. Tahine is like a, it's like a chili uh, salt type of thing. Okay. So I'm going to rim this glass really carefully here. This is one of the red components in the cocktail. Okay. It's a nice combined uh, combination of sweet and sour, which goes really well with the with the ingredients, the tequila and the mezcal in this thing. And the spice. And the spice. Yep. I like the fact you got the lime as the, the, the sticking agent. That's cool. Yeah, lime makes a good sticking agent. It tastes yeah. good uh, with the spices and everything. I That's like cool. a really well-lined uh, edge of the glass. So I'm going to really... You're really getting up in there. That's good. You can see that it's nicely lined there. It is. It looks good. Okay. So that's there. Okay. So the root thing in the cocktail shaker with some ice. I think, Steve, a good point for the audience here is Dave has, has elevated his game to using an ice scoop instead of his hands. Yes. He, he, he had, he had like points that. deducted uh, during one of the competitions because yes. he just reached his hands right in there. Yeah, uh, well, just went for it. Well, he, hooks. Uh, he lost um, uh, seven-tenths of a point for that. First ingredient is, uh, is a nice tequila. Don't skip okay. out of your tequila. Go with a good one. Like Ho Jose Cuervo, for instance? No. <laughs> No, not this one. <laughs> okay, so nice tequila. Dave, what tequila is that? This is a Casachun Blanco. I All did right. not pronounce it. I slayed it. Here, let's see. Yeah, okay. Camera. And there you go. All right. Nice. Different color uh, there. Uh, we have a mezcal. Give it a little bit more smoky hint. Just tequila alone, I don't like in a, in a margarita type drink. I like a little mezcal in there too. So we're just going to go with a half ounce of mezcal, not much. And I'm using a really good mezcal from Vago, Mezcal Vago. Okay. Really good, uh, nice smoky mezcal. Just a half ounce of that. And uh, 
Then we go to our Colorado chili liqueur. This is some wonderful stuff. It goes, it's a sweet and chili liqueur, a little sweetness, a little chili. Okay. And I'm just going with a half ounce of that as well. Then uh, comes our blue curacao. And I've got an ounce of that. The mandatory ingredient for the month, the blue curacao. Thanks to McNew, she sets all these, what they are. All complaints need to go to her. I, I have to say that I love that Kevin Majors called it um, Curaco because I Cur pronounced it that way for most that, of my life. Curaco? Yeah. Until I learned Curaco. it correctly. <laughs> that is my tequila pronunciation. So then we've got a half ounce of lime juice goes in from my freshly squeezed lime. Very sustainable. <laughs> Using all the pieces. Is it shaking vigorously? Bigger is shaking. He's going with the uh, shake style in front of him. He doesn't go over the shoulder there. I notice when Molly Wellman shakes, it's up here. It's more in this region as opposed to like this. So I'm, I'm, I'm sensing a theme in each of Dave's things here that it may not be appropriate for an under 18 audience. Okay, uh, okay. But if you, if you pick it all out, you can see the themes as he's going through all these cocktails. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> So now we're going to strain into our rimmed glass. Okay. okay. Here we go. Looks very blue. Okay, we're going to leave a little bit of room for our marvelous foam here. Okay. Foaming agent. It's going in. He's going in. Get ready. I'm going to blow it all over. Got to do a control troll here. This this is where it's tough. It's where champions are made, Dave. All right. Now my, Filled like, up the glass. My little kid, I like lots of foam here. So <laughs> we're going to. Lots of Man, he's going above the rim even. Yes. Give us a spoon. Podcast yeah. audience, he's, he's taking the foam above the rim. All right. What we're going to do, we're going to garnish. I've got a, a, a fresh strawberry. Fresh strawberry, okay. On the rim. All right. Piece de resistance is a red Twizzler that I took and uh, put a uh, shish kebab skewer through to make sure it's hollow. This is your nice candy straw. Wow. Nice. Up nice. In red, white, and blue. All right. Wow. All right. Very nice. Wow. These are three. We're going to have a tough time. Hunter just, he turned his camera off. Oh, he's back on. I thought Hunter was like, oh, this is too tough. This is all really good, good ones here. All right. We do want Ryan to break this one down again because you're a guy, you own a restaurant and uh, you got a bar. And, you know, so I like the perspective of you having the experience doing this stuff. And also, you know, you also come from the perspective as an owner, is this something you could sell at your establishment? So talk to us a little bit about this one. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Dave, first off, you nailed the red, white, and blue. Super creative of what you have going on there. I didn't even realize that there was a, a red Twizzler coming in at the end for the cocktail straw. I mean, I've never seen that. That's as creative as it gets. That's good, right? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Uh, so the, yeah, kudos to you on that and using the strawberry. Uh, from a, a restaurant perspective, and I know we're not serving in restaurants here, but I think uh, maybe the cow patty of uh, whipped foam might have been a bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> the cow uh, but nonetheless, I love they call that. that a white buffalo chip? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, 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 it's settled down a bit. It, it settles it's down. down. It settles down. Okay. <laughs> nonetheless, Dave, I think maybe that's my only knock. I think a little less foam. Uh, but super creative and, and making that foam. You don't see that a lot. Certainly you don't ever see that at home cocktail bars uh, with you having uh, the cocktail whipper and getting creative with what you're making there uh, is really taking it the extra step. Uh, again, doing the, the rim as you did with a little lime uh, uh, for the sticking agent. And then uh, with the, the tahini salt mix uh, with the orange chili sugar, dude, that's super cool, man. I, <laughs> I don't know what you do for your day job, but I think you're hired as a bartender at my restaurant whenever you want. So, there you go. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks for the shout out uh, to my neighbors down the road at Rising Sun Distillery. They're a, a little distillery outside of the uh, downtown Denver area, making that chili liqueur. I've had that chili liqueur. Uh, it's delicious. And I think that's a really nice touch here. Using both tequila and mezcal in the cocktail. Uh, again, similar to what Kevin was doing with both the, uh, the bourbon and the rye. In his cocktail, I like to see that combination. Uh, I think you, you nailed those ratios correctly. 
with just a half ounce of the mezcal to add a little bit of that smoky flavor too. I thought that would probably uh, add some uh, really interesting complexity to the cocktail uh, and a nice, nice touch there. So um, overall, I think you hit all the right points. Uh, one, uh, one small knock again is this is the bourbon cocktail uh, show and uh, there's no bourbon or whiskey in this. Uh, but I, I bet you the drink's delicious, so I'm ready. I'm ready to try it. So okay, all right. So there we go. All of our uh, our um, entries have gone now. Uh, the power now shifts to the judges. So for our judges, your instructions are going to be to tell us about the cocktails, kind of what you liked about them, you know, what do you thought could be improved, those type of constructive things, of course, and uh, and why you liked them. And then I just need your, your ranking, what you thought was your favorite, one, two, and three. So uh, that it's as simple as that. Uh, Hunter, you are going to be first. Tell us a little bit about the cocktails and then give us your ranking. Uh, it's pretty tough. Um, there, there was a lot going on. Uh, that's the stuff I've never even heard of. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. Very so complex ingredients. So, yeah. So, I did, like, there was a lot of components to each one of them. So, it was kind of hard to tell what was going on. Mm-hmm. Hunter's got someone visiting him now. He's at the distillery. Yeah. Uh, the, the owner is over top of me. It's very distracting. <laughs> Uh, but uh, Adina's first one, I mean, it's, it's the techniques that they're important and be able to uh, get all three colors very distinct, too. That was pretty cool to do, uh, see that. I love Kevin's uh, attitude, uh, quick whip. Uh, then Dave's, I mean, it's it looked amazing. I mean, I, I really want to try it, Dave's. Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that one looks like, a, yeah, that's that's dessert right there. I mean, it's a combination of dessert and a cocktail, I think. Uh, I'm so, a big, yeah. I like a lot of whipped cream on it, too, so I, that actually looks pretty good. Okay, okay. And the, the Twizzler thing, like like Ryan said, was uh, was perfect. And again, it's something that, that, again, from a perspective of an owner, I assume that you sit that cocktail down in front of someone, and they pick it up, it's got a Twizzler for a straw, they're like, I want one of those. And that's what you want with your cocktail program. You want the people to be visually seeing it and saying, I want one of those. And that's how you sell cocktails. So, so I think, I think that that plays well into it. So Hunter, all that stuff being said, what's your ranking here? What, what was your favorite one out of these three? Uh, I would have to go with Dave. Dave. Okay. Dave is first. All right. Oh, second place. Adina. Adina, okay, and then that leaves Kevin in third place. Not reflective of anybody's job here. They're all, I'd say they're all A's, but we have to separate them by the thinness of margins here, and that's exactly what we're doing in our rankings. All right, next up, person we want to hear from is Ryan. Ryan, tell us a little bit about these three cocktails and what you liked, and then uh, we'll get your ranking afterwards, okay? Sure, you got it. I'll try not to repeat myself too much here, but we'll start out with the Blue Rocket Pop. Again, it's a great presentation. I love the fact that he... Uh, Use two different kinds of whiskey there, uh, given the, the theme of the show. But unfortunately, the overall uh, theme was a red, white, and blue cocktail. And he got one out of three colors uh, correctly, uh, but was missing uh, two out of the three co uh, colors. So uh, so I think uh, if it was based on personality, I think he'd be probably right on up there and I'd go out having a cocktail with him tonight. But uh, since he missed the theme of the red, white, and blue, uh, I think I'm going to put him as number three. Okay. Uh, between Dave and Adina, I don't want to uh, start any uh, in-house fighting going on there. You guys are, you guys are shoulder Already shoulder. way behind that. <laughs> 33 years of marriage. It's all right. Fantastic. But uh, I'm coming over. Give me your address and I'll be there after the show ends here tonight. Man, I want to try some of these cocktails. You guys uh, certainly learned a couple things during the COVID quarantine times and it shows that you guys are having a lot of fun with it. Um, uh, with Adina and the Immigrant, I, I love the name of it, uh, Incorporate the Red, White, and Blue. Uh, using those layers is a little more advanced cocktail technique that you don't often see at home bars. So that was pretty cool to see her nail those techniques. Uh, I'm sure the drink is delicious, uh, but she's coming in at number two. And so that leaves Dave with the Tangled Up in Red, White, and Blue as my number one tonight. So. Number one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Next up is going to be Tim. Well, I've got no... Uh 
industry experience in any of this other than a consumer. Uh, right. So, uh, uh, Dina, yours was amazing. I, I always love your presentation and everything. My own problem is I'm colorblind. So the red and blue and mix to be able to see that on the bottom, all I see is purple for some reason. That's what's coming through to me, purple and pink. <laughs> So I, I, don't, I can't formally tell if you touched all three, but I absolutely probably have. And it's just my stupidity and, uh, and uh, not me not being able to get myself dressed in the morning properly. Uh, Kevin's, Kevin's uh, cocktail needs to be in a fishbowl with Swedish fish with tons of straws and everybody on the floor afterwards. That thing looks spectacular. That, if you can make that thing in volume, everybody's taking their clothes off. It's going to be great. Um, <laughs> So, and then, and then Dave, you, you hit it again. You, you got all three. I can't stand tequila. I try and try and try. I can't stand tequila. Uh, mezcal, I can get around, but man, that's a lot of whip. Wow. And you, sh you shake so vigorously more than anybody I've ever seen as well. So um, you got me intrigued, but with that, I got to go with what I'm most intrigued with, uh, whether I like it or not. And um, Dave, I have you as number one, Adina is number two, and Kevin is number three. Uh, and Kevin, the only reason why is because of that, um, not hitting two out of the three. That's the tough part. Um, so I'm up next. I, I'm going to, uh, you know, harp on the thing that the, the judges did. I do think, you know, Kevin created a great cocktail and a, a very sellable cocktail. It's, I think that that could play at restaurants, but again, when there's a theme, the theme was red, white, and blue. You had to use the blue curacao. He used that, but again, I think it lent him to only hitting on that, on the one. So that's, that's, that's definitely going to hurt him. I, I, uh, to me, I think I, I would probably try Kevin's before Dave's, but I got, I got to, because of the, the ingredients, I'm going to, I'm going to give Kevin a third and Dave second. I, I just thought to me, uh, Adina's was the, the best one. I, I, that's the one that I personally like best. I thought it was cool. I, I thought that, uh, that, you know, she did use the colors and the layers and, uh, I'd be interested about that. And then I'd be interested of how you drink that one. Are you drinking by layer? You mixing it up together. What are you doing with that thing? So I, I, I think it, it definitely makes you curious. And um, I, that's the one I would go for. So uh, Adina, I'm giving you first place, Dave second, and Kevin third place. He actually has a, a procedure on how you drink it. Yeah. And, I, and I was yelled at because I didn't do it. There's like a class on that, how to, how to drink this cocktail. You take okay. the straw and you start sucking and then you plunge it through the layers as you're sucking. Ah, so you get a little bit of each layer as you go. No. Okay, makes yeah, sense. I didn't do it right. Yeah, I don't think I'd do it right either. <laughs> all right, that leaves you, McNew. You're the last one. Okay, so these are all beautiful. Um, I'll start with Adina. I'm super impressed by your layering technique because anytime I try to layer anything I just get purple blob it's not going to be cute this was beautiful um I also like that you use the lingonberry and the elderflower to get some natural flavors in there because blue curacao can taste very fake and very processed so I love that you added some natural flavors and some some of your own mixes so I imagine that'll taste delicious um Kevin Majors, I loved those rocket pops when I was a kid. Um, oh, yeah. This is just like the sugary cocktail. Like I would absolutely drink this on a beach and probably feel real bad later. But um, also he still got this beautiful blue collar using whiskeys. Cause I'd assume that brown would turn it green. I don't know how he did it, but it <laughs> looks beautiful, Kevin. And I'm going to give you some props though. Cause they were uh, saying you didn't get the red, white, and blue in your photo before it got cropped. You had this decoration next to it. That was red, white, and blue. So I see what you did there. <laughs> decoration. <laughs> yes. I see what you did. Um, Dave, I loved yours. That presentation was fantastic. It's beautiful. Um, I hate egg whites though, but you've got some points back with that tahine rim. Cause I will put tahine on literally anything and it'll make my day. Uh, beautiful. Um, they get on the foam. I don't like real foamy things. It's just a personal thing, but this would be beautiful. I would see it at a bar and be real curious. Um, so my number one is Adina. Two is Dave. Three, Kevin. Yeah. All right. We do. It, it ends up being pretty darn close, but we do have a winner. So in third place is Kevin. Uh, he got he got third from everybody and it ended up by a score of only one point separating the two. Adina comes in with 12. Dave comes in with 13. He, Dave has won it again. Uh, Congratulations, oh, Dave. Yes, Dave. And Dave, you are our champion. Delicious. I will confirm hers is delicious too. Ah, there you go. 
that's the thing about testing and, and coming up with cocktails is you get to try each other's cocktails and yeah. failed experiments and what have you. So. Yes. Well, there's where we're at. Dave wins. He wins a $20 uh, gift card to the ABV Network shop. Uh, Justine is on here, so she'll take care of that tomorrow for him, and or maybe even tonight. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what goes into that. I just know it magically gets done, <laughs> and Justine does it, so that's all I know. So it'll, it'll, it'll happen, and uh, yes, we appreciate that, and we want to get others involved, so, so please get involved in the ABV uh, cocktail contest. The next month for, for August, so it'll be August 1st to 15th, you can get in the contest. The theme is going to be beach days and you have to use sea salt in your cocktail. Sea salt. So if you're interested in what we've got going on, head over to abvnetwork.com slash coin. This is a contest sponsored by the ABV Network Challenge Coin. And uh, so it's abvnetwork.com slash coin. Get all the rules. There's just a couple of things you got to do. And really, it's just a matter of like tagging McNew and stuff like that. So we know that you've done it following the, of course, the theme and the uh, ingredient. And it's as simple as that. So please check it out and anybody can get involved. So uh, we'd love to have you in there. Uh, again, final congratulations to Dave and all of our contestants. Let's give a round of applause for yeah, everybody. Who did. everybody. They did a great job and uh, really fun stuff. We'll wrap this one up as we always do by thanking our, our guest uh, uh, host here too. I, I, our judges did a great job today. So really, uh, I want to thank you for, on behalf of McNew and I. Uh, we thank you guys for being part of this. We like mixing up and having different judges every time. And you guys did a great job. And we definitely love to have you back. Hunter, we'll start with you in terms of where people can find you. They want to follow your journey. Do you do anything on social media? Or you can share your company stuff, whatever, whatever works out. Uh, it's mainly uh, the company stuff. So it's three boys farm distillery.com. Same thing for Facebook and also Instagram, too. All right, Ryan, how about you? Yeah, my name is Ryan Thompson. I don't do social personally, but from a business perspective, it's uh, <laughs> tenthwhiskey.com. That's one zero th whiskey with an e.com. Our social handles are tenth mtn whiskey. So, all right. And I have a, a barrel set aside from Ryan that is uh, over a 140 proof hazmat. I can't wait to get that. Uh, we're working on that. It'll, 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 be, yes, it's, it'll be soon, I hope. We'll, we'll know more information. Tim, how about you? Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me under the corporate events and private events page on abbnetwork.com or on Instagram at swyguy2112. All right, McNew, how about you? I am on Instagram at McNew ABB. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website. That thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. All of our previous shows, our blogs, contest information, our shop. Check it out, abvnetwork.com. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABB network. Great job today, gang. Congratulations to Dave. Thanks everybody for playing. And we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. See ya. Bye. Peace.